Coming up on Jerusalem Dateline, Israel on high alert for strikes from Iran, while Israeli air defenses shoot down drones from Iraq, and the U.S. at a pivotal moment. Election analysis from CBN's John Wagi. Plus, a look at Iran's ethnic minorities, which could play a role in bringing freedom from the Islamic regime. And prayers from Jewish friends in Shiloh for America. All this and more on this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. Hello and welcome to this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. I'm Chris Mitchell. Tehran is threatening a strong and complex attack on Israel with more powerful weapons and warheads. The U.S. and Israel are preparing for this potential strike. And in the U.S., it's Election Day, which is keenly watched by Israelis. Here's the latest. Saturday, Iran's Ayatollah Khomeini ramped up his threats against Israel and the United States. The enemies, be it the Zionist regime or the United States of America, will definitely receive a crushing response in return for what they are doing against the Iranian nation and the resistance front. An Iranian official also warned Iran may reconsider its nuclear doctrine if it faces an existential threat. He claims Iran has the ability to produce nuclear weapons, but is restrained by an Islamic ruling by the supreme leader. The Iranian threats follow Israel's attack in October that damaged Iran's ballistic missile production and destroyed much of its air defenses. That attack in response to Iran launching more than 180 ballistic missiles at Israel. The U.S. and Israel are making preparations. The U.S. CENTCOM commander meeting with Israeli military officials and visiting a U.S. defense battery sent here to bolster Israel's air defenses. The Pentagon also announcing uh, it sent B-52s to the region. Israeli Defense Minister Yuav Gallant told IDF troops Israel is fighting Iran on multiple fronts, from Gaza to Lebanon, Iraq and Yemen. And on the border with Lebanon, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu laid out the goals for its war with Hezbollah. With or without an agreement, the key to restoring the calm and security in the north, the key to returning our residents in the north safely to their homes is, first of all, to push Hezbollah beyond the Litani. Second, is to strike at any attempt to rearm itself. Third, is to respond vigorously to any action against us. Simply put, enforcement, 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 and cutting off Hezbollah's pipeline from Iran through Syria. In Gaza, Israel's latest intelligence assessments suggest 51 of the 101 hostages held in Gaza are still alive. Intelligence also suggests Hamas has murdered at least 27 hostages in captivity. Meanwhile, Israel's foreign mission notified the UN that it's pulling out of the 1967 agreement recognizing the Palestinian aid agency, UNRWA. Last week, the Knesset voted to ban the agency in Israeli-controlled territory over some of its workers' ties to Hamas. The IDF says it's in a higher state of alert as it anticipates an attack from Iran or its proxies. Looking forward, I say this to you, we are highly prepared across all fronts. Iran is threatening both Israel and the United States. Iranian demonstrators are chanting death to Israel and death to America as they wave signs reading, we'll trample America. Iran's supreme leader says forces are moving into position to attack. Thanks to Allah, the officials are already busy doing that. To prevent a direct Israeli counterattack on Iran itself, the Islamic regime may use its militias in Iraq. Iran's proxies in Iraq have launched a number of suicide drones against Israel in the last few days. Even while facing imminent attack and fighting a war on multiple fronts, Israelis are glued to the U.S. elections. In a poll published last week by Israel's Channel 12, Israelis overwhelmingly favored Republican candidate Donald Trump over Democrat Kamala Harris. When asked who they preferred to be the next president, 66 percent chose Trump, while 17 percent chose Vice President Harris, and another 17 percent said they didn't know. They had different reasons for their choices. I would prefer to have a woman as the leader of the United States. I think it could be a change for the better, and I hope she is elected. I'm thinking of Donald Trump. 
He has proven himself, even last time he was President of the United States he helped Israel a lot, with Jerusalem, with the Golan Heights. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. Americans are off to the polls today, and it wouldn't be a U.S. election without analysis from CBN's John Wagi. We caught up with him on the road in Kansas, and here's our conversation. John Wagi, great to be with you. You know, you've been the CBN News election analyst for many, many years. You used to do this with Pat Robertson. Uh, he's gone on to his reward, and uh, so I'll be trying to do a stand-in. Uh, you're in the United States right now. Tell us your impressions of here we are on Election Day. Yeah, Chris, from my perspective, I'm in rural Kansas, uh, the heartland. And, uh, you know, it's really pretty amazing. It's almost like nothing happened between 2020 and 2024. We're, we're almost on a rerun where uh, the election's very close. Um, and last time, I believe that uh, there might have been a slight edge to Biden, at least in the polls, if you can believe the polls, and I generally don't. Um, but this year, it's Trump that has a slight edge, I think. And, uh, you know, some people are talking about a, a, a possible Trump landslide. But it's all in the counting. And I think when it, when it all, uh, you know, boils down to it, that it's going to be a battle over the next three months or two months anyway. It's, it's not going to stop on election night. We're going to have challenges. We're going to have legal battling. And uh, remains to be seen how it's going to affect not only the White House race, but uh, the congressional races as well. Yeah. Uh, talk about these next few months. I mean, do you expect uh, some people are expecting violence? There's a few few uh, governors that have already called out the National Guard in Portland. They're actually boarding up uh, some of the stores uh, in downtown. Uh, but do you anticipate uh, a lot of uncertainty for the next few months until January 20th? Definitely uncertainty because and not maybe not so much in the streets, but more in the legal arena, the judicial arena. Uh, challenges. We've, the Democrats have already been openly talking about challenging Trump based on the fact that he got a felony conviction in New York. Um, and uh, they might use the 14th Amendment to challenge even his uh, legal ability to be president. I think that the, um, the Republican side, there could be challenges everywhere. Uh, they were charging at President Trump himself was charging voter fraud even before the election happened in 2020. And there could be election challenges. We've already seen some in Pennsylvania, Michigan, other places. So it's it's really, uh, you know, it's going to be what one uh, person on social media called a roller coaster ride. It's going to be up and down, up and down. Um, but I have a feeling that election night might be uh, much more positive for the Trump camp than it was uh, four years ago. You talked about a possible landslide. I mean, some people that don't necessarily look at the polls, <clears throat> but look at maybe voter registration as more of an indicator, a harbinger of where the voters are going, uh, that's that actually very positive, especially in these so-called swing states. Yes, Chris. And uh, the other thing, too, is that Trump has gone outside the swing states to compete in some areas where he wasn't supposed to win. He was having rallies over the weekend in Virginia. Um, he's he's been many times to Nevada, uh, which is looking better than it has uh, four years ago. And uh, also, you could look not just at the registration numbers, but also, if, if you're that kind uh, inclined this way, you could look at the betting numbers, which have been overwhelmingly for Trump in the in the last two weeks. Yeah. Uh, two questions, John. The first one is. Uh, somebody was saying, you know, if he does become president, he's going to need soldiers. What do you think about the House and the Senate? How does that look right now? The Senate looks better for the Republicans, actually, than the House, again, if you believe the polls. Um, the House of Representatives is, I think, a, what, three, four point uh, or four seat majority for the Republicans. Um, the There has been a lot of Democrat money spent on those congressional races, thinking that they could block Trump if they had to in the Congress. But uh, when you lo are looking at a potential landslide, and I stress the word potential, uh, Congress could go with Trump on that. He could have coattails, and then um, you know he's going to be set uh, to to enact uh, parts, good parts of his agenda.
Yeah, final question, John. Tell us, how should people be praying? Uh, pray for the uh, just peace in the nation. Uh, you know, Chris, from all the intercessors that we've been talking to in Jerusalem, that there are people all over the world who are praying because it, it, the United States is not just affected by this election, but nations around the world are affected by it, and certainly Israel. So we pay, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for every legal vote to be counted. We pray for safety at the polls. And uh and, and just that the Lord's plans and purposes for the election will be fully realized. Yeah. Great points for prayer, John. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Chris. See you soon. We've had a lot of Iranian guests on Jerusalem Dateline talking about the disenchantment Iranians feel with the current Islamic regime. The question is, what can they do about it? Our next guest from the Middle East Media Research Institute has a strategy for what could happen next. Yigal Karman, founder of Memory, thanks so much for joining us. You really bring us so much insight and understanding about the Middle East and the whole region. Everyone's talking about Iran. What menace does it represent to Israel and to the world? Thank you for having me, Chris. Uh, Iran is a threat not only for Israel, but also for the West in general. Let me cite a few problems. First of all, they see America as the great Satan and Israel is a small one. Uh, then uh, every speech ends up uh, full of uh, death to America, death to Israel. Uh, it constitutes a, a, a um, menace on various levels. One is economic. They already stopped through their proxy in the, the Houthis, 60% of the traffic in the uh, Red Sea, the Suez. Uh, they hold a sword on the uh, oil in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, uh, the Emirates, Bahrain, even they threatened even uh, Azerbaijan uh, and got a fierce reaction. Uh, then there is the security threat. One is missiles that reach Europe, they have them, and they are trying to build ICBM missiles that reach America. When they manage, it will be a threat of missiles to America. Then there is the nuclear, of course. And above all that, is the um, threat of terrorism beginning in 83 with the Marines and uh, all along Hezbollah and others. So uh, this has to be uh, stopped somehow, this regime. It's an, a Western problem to stop. So now, can you stop this with a war or without a war? No. This is the big thing, uh, that it, no, no one wants war. No American president, Trump, will not want war. No one, we don't want anybody. Can it be done without a war? The answer is absolutely yes. There is a very strange situation that uh, Iran, let me explain, is made up of 50% uh, um, almost Parsis, some of them are opponents of the regime, many, and some are the regime guy, the Ayatollah's guy, the um, Islamists, uh, Shiites. The 50, other 50% 50 are ethnic minorities, which are repressed for many years by the Islamic regime. And they struggle for their freedom, for rights, for autonomy, for confederation. Some want even independence. And guess what? They are being killed for years. And guess what? The West doesn't help them. Iran has proxies. All the terrorist organizations are their proxies. The West is not helping freedom fighters, true freedom fighters, Baluchis, Ahwazis, uh, Kurds, and Azeris. And there are more, but smaller. These four groups, ethnic groups, seek their freedom, fight for it. They need to be helped. This will remove the Ayatollah's regime like that, if the West helped them. Mm. You're actually in touch with many of these leaders. Right. What are they telling you? And we are even publishing, uh, giving them a platform, publishing their material. Uh, lately, we published a, an article by the, uh, Dr. Arif al-Kaabi, who is the leader of the Ahwazis, 
uh, uh, in south of Iran, all the region of the oil, and Dr. Af Arif al Kabi wrote an article, I have a dream. I have a dream, and he explained what is the dream. It's a beautiful article, a dream of peace and understanding and of freedom. Freedom of the control of the crazy Ayatollahs. That's the only name for them. Yeah. Uh, there is a head of the Paluchis, Herbi Armari. He also wrote in memory, we give him a platform, about the plight of the Baluchis that are repressed by the Iranian regime to the ground and killed. And there are the Kurds, and there are the Azeris. Uh, we are in touch with all of them. We give them platform, but it's not about a platform for presenting their positions, their dreams, their hopes. It is about help with money and weapons. It is not the war of America. It is their war for autonomy, confederation, independence. Yeah. Egal, final, uh, final question. What's the bottom line for the West? What do they need to know? Well, they need to look at what they surely know. If you look at the CIA booklets of uh, information, they know everything about the autonomy, about the ethnic groups. And they do nothing. It's unbelievable. The Iranians have proxies. The West doesn't have peoples that seek their support to have a peaceful Middle East without this regime. Yeah. Powerful message, Yigal, and I think one that the West needs to take heed. Thanks so much for bringing it. Thank you, Gus. America received some special prayer support ahead of Election Day from their Israeli friends. Our Middle East correspondent, Julie Stahl, brings us that story from the ancient biblical city of Shiloh. We pray for strength, success, and guiding in these times. Together, minded by hope, we pray for this new government. Here at Shiloh, where the Ark of the Covenant rested for 369 years, about 150 Orthodox Jews gathered to pray for America. We are in a critical time of a war uh, of good versus evil. We are in a critical time when uh, our enemy is trying to drive off the Jewish from the heartland. We are in critical time of election in the United States of America. Governor Israel Gantz, leader of the Benjamin Regional Council in Samaria, hosted the event. From here we pray that God will shine his face for everyone that work with him and do whatever he can for the United States of America, for Israel and for the whole land. His message to America. Raise your head. We have to fight with our enemies. We have to believe that God will lead us for the good way. We have to stand strong together, strong America, strong Israel, and we have to think about the holy land. That what God wants from us, and we'll do that. Shiloh, often called Shiloh, is where Hannah in the book of Samuel cried out to God for a child and he provided her heart's desire. The Orthodox Jews said the daily morning prayers and psalms for the good of America. We were speaking to our friends overseas in Congress and in Senate and friends in different ministries all over the world. And I said to them that I'm really praying. I'm standing in my home in Ailey looking down at Shiloh and I'm praying for their success, for the success of America. And then I said, why don't we have a prayer for America? Eliana Passantine shared the idea with Christian and Jewish friends around the world. They said, well, you're going to stop everything. You have your sons are away at war. You're going to stop in the middle of your war and pray for us. And I said, of course. And they were so humbled and excited to hear that we are going to stop our lives and take everyone here for our morning prayer, for a special prayer for the United States of America. She says Christians, especially in America, understand Israel's biblical importance and they pray for Israel. And now it's our turn to say thank you to you. Thank you to the people praying for us all over the world. Thank you to the United States of America for being by our side. And this is our chance to say thank you, and we pray for you. Rabbi Menachem Ba'abad brought about 50 students from his high school to join the prayers. He noted they will be the next generation defending Israel. We want to pray that it will be good for America. And we want to thank you for all the support that America has given the state of Israel. With the help of God, we believe that prayer works in the world, 
and it will do good for the world and America is part of the world. Josh Reinstein of the Israel Allies Foundation also came to pray. Since October 7th, we've seen that around 80% of Americans are standing with the nation of Israel. We see that tens of millions of Bible-believing Christians are praying for the peace of Jerusalem every day. And we said, you know what, we need to do something for America. And what we decided to do is come together and pray also for America. He called it a blessing to pray his morning prayers in Shiloh. It was a very exciting time to be here in Chilo with people from Israel praying for America, praying for peace and prosperity in America. And uh, I think that uh, we all believe in the power of prayer. So this isn't just a, you know, a nice thing to do. This is significant and we hope that Hashem answers our prayers. They concluded with the blast of the shofar. Followed by joyful dancing and singing. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Shiloh. Well, how wonderful for the U.S. to get prayer support from Israeli friends. Well, that's all for this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can follow us on social media, and you can also access CBN content through our CBN News and other CBN apps. And don't forget to sign up for our email blast so you can receive information on breaking news. And please keep praying for Israel, for the peace of Jerusalem, and for the IDF soldiers and all those caught in harm's way, and for the hostages in Gaza to come home. We'll leave you with verses 1 and 2 from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Amazing verses. Well, I'm Chris Mitchell. For all of us here at the Jerusalem Bureau, we'll see you next time on Jerusalem Dateline.